Hey guys, recently I've been making these point cloud edits using Blender and posting them on social media and they gained quite a bit of traction and I've had a couple of people ask me how to make this particular effect. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you today in this video. Right off the bat, I wanna say that this edit was inspired by a Blender artist that has way more experience than I do that goes by the name of Mantisa. I strongly suggest checking out his work and on top of that, he has plenty of free assets and project files to play around with. One more thing that I wanted to mention is that I initially started this project trying to import a .ply file, which is a point cloud, into Blender. But unfortunately, while importing that type of file, Blender doesn't import the color data with it, although it works in other programs. So the workaround for this is you either have to find an add-on that does support the importing of color data, or you have to use a completely different method, such as geometry nodes, which is the method that I used. In fact, the artist Mantisa that I mentioned before uses this point cloud visualizer add-on, but at the end of the day, if you want to distort your point cloud, you're gonna have to use geometry nodes either way. Now this method works on any 3D object. The only catch is that I don't know how to have the color data imported with objects that have more than one shader applied to it. So I strongly recommend only using objects that have one shader on it. Now the 3D model that we're gonna use to apply this point cloud effect to is a 3D scan of a NYC deli that I scanned myself. The app that I used to scan this 3D model with was Polycam, and I strongly recommend that app if you need to get 3D scans with your phone on the go. But you're not only restricted to 3D scans, you can also use 3D models you modeled yourself with this geometry node setup. As for the 3D scan, the process was relatively simple. You can photo scan 3D models in two ways using the traditional photo mode or by using the LiDAR mode if your phone supports that. I suggest photo mode for objects that are small or very detailed objects. Now, if you're gonna scan a large area or room, I suggest going with the LiDAR option. Both options have their ups and downs, so I strongly suggest just experimenting and seeing which one is the best to use for your particular use case. You can download Polycam from the App Store and give this app a shot right away. They have a free tier, so you're allowed to make 3D models without spending any money, but I suggest getting the pro tier if you want to get the most out of the app. Now without further ado, let's get straight into building this effect. First up, you want to import your 3D model. I downloaded mine as a .glb file, as it already has the image texture in the file. With .obj files, the image texture is separate, which is an extra step in your workflow. Once you have your model imported, you want to go into viewport shading to make sure that the texture looks right, and it does in this case, so we can proceed to the actual effect. From here, you want to add a new workspace and go into geometry nodes. We can get rid of this spreadsheet because we're not really using it for this effect. And you want to click the new button to create a new geometry nodes. From here, in order to convert this mesh into a point cloud, you want to get the node mesh to points. Now, as you can see here, what this node has done is that it turned each vertice into a point. Now, if you don't like the way that this point cloud looks, there's another method that you can use to generate different types of point clouds, which I'll show right now. You can add a distribute points on faces node. And after that, add a set point radius. And from here, you can create and generate your own point clouds to any density you like and even create completely new point clouds by changing the seed. So as you can see here, here's the distribute points on faces method, and here is the mesh to points method. So whichever one that you prefer, you can proceed with that one. Now, if we go into render view, you can see that this point cloud has no material. So what we have to do is we have to add two additional nodes in order to get the color data back onto the model. And those two nodes are a stored named attribute and the image texture. Now the image texture, we want to set it to the texture of the model we imported. And to find out the image texture, you can go into the shading properties, bring down base color, and you could see the name of the textures. So we want image underscore zero, and we'll set it to image underscore zero. And we want to have the UV map of the model in geometry nodes so that we can have each point have its appropriate color. But unfortunately, there isn't a UV map node in geometry nodes. So the method to get the UV map is you have to plug in the vector of the image texture into the group input, go into geometry nodes, see that vector right here, click this input attribute toggle and get the UV map from there. Now from there, we want to hook up this image texture color into the value of the stored name attribute. 
and we want to make the name of the attribute something simple we could remember. I like to name mine call for color. And we, instead of float, we want to get color because we are working with colors, it disconnected. So I'll just reconnect it back here. And from there, as with most geometry node setups, in order to add a material, we need to add also a set material node to the end of this node setup. And from there, we are going to make it the default material that comes with this model. Now, if we go into rendered view, you can see that we have some sort of grayish color, but we don't have the image texture showing on these points yet. And we need to do a simple shading setup in order to fix that. In fact, the shading setup is so simple. It only requires one node. We're going to disconnect the original base color from the shading setup. And the node that you want to add is an attribute node and connect it into base color. Now, as you can see here, we still don't have the color yet, which is why we saved that color attribute. So all you need to do in the attribute node is type in the name of your attribute, which I named call, and now the color will show. Now from here, we have our point cloud with all its respective colors. And because we're using geometry nodes mesh to points or either distribute points on faces, we actually get perfect 3D spheres to work with. Now from here, I like to add a cube to the entire scene. Make sure to set the viewport display to wired so it's easier to work. And I like to add a principled volume to that. Hook up the volume to volume and set the density to something low, like 0 0.05, so that we have some volume action going on in the point cloud to give a little bit of depth perception and mood to the scene. Now from there, we can add some lighting to the scene. I like to add an area light behind points that gives for a dramatic look. And we could set the power to something like 1000. And if we go into render view and we bring the world viewport color from white to black, you can see the result that it gives off. The light's a little strong, so I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. Now from here, the effect is done. But what if you want to distort the point cloud? and make some trippy effects like I did in my edits. Now, in order to do that, we have to add a few more nodes. Now, a really good node to manipulate geometry is a set position node, which is a node that I will be using. And from there, you want to add a noise texture to displace the points and plug in the color into offset. And as you can see, it has already made a similar effect to what I did in the video, but I'm gonna bring down the scale a little bit and I am going to mess with the detail a little bit. I think one is a good value to start with. But if we turn the noise texture on and off, you can see that it is displacing the geometry in a way that it kind of moves it a little bit, and we don't want to do that. So in order to fix that, we want to add a vector math node and have it set to add as it is by default. Now, the magic number to fix this issue is negative 0.5. And now, as you can see here, it is simply displacing the mesh without translating it in any way. Now, the last node I like to add is a vector math set to multiply and just plug it in right there. And what we can do from here is we can increase the strength of the noise using this node right here. And now if we add in a group input node and add in a new socket into the vector, this name this distortion scale. And instead of vector, we want it to be a float value. Now inside the modifiers properties panel, we have a slider that can bring the noise scale up or down. Now from here, you could play with your noise values until you get an effect that you like. And one additional thing, you want to change the noise texture from 3D to 4D so that you can animate the noise over time. So we could get a group input right here and drag in a new socket which will be W and this W will allow you to animate the noise over time. And if you use a driver of the pound sign frame divided by 30, because we don't want it to go as fast. And as you can see now, the noise animates over time, giving this really nice and smooth effect. Now, another stylized look that you can do is before the noise texture, you can add a Voronoi texture and plug in the position into vector. And from here, you want to bring the scale down to a lower value and also bring the randomness down. And as you can see here, as we press play, we kind of get this tiled card look, which is another effect that looks nice that you could play around with. Now this set position node right here allows for even finer control and more advanced effects. I won't completely go over it in this tutorial, 
But all I'm going to say is that by using vector coordinates, vector inputs, and vector math, you can create some pretty advanced effects such as particle dissolves and much more that I haven't even made yet. I know at first geometry nodes can be pretty intimidating as they were for me, but my piece of advice is to just keep watching tutorials and don't be afraid to experiment. If you got something out from this video, consider subscribing as I have way more videography and VFX content coming. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.